So the frosts have finally taken their toll on pretty much everything that's half hardy in the garden now. So all the irisene, petranthus, dahlias, etc. are completely gone to mush. But not to worry, the dahlias and the cannas, they'll come back from the ground. It doesn't matter about all the top foliage dying. And I've got cuttings of all my irisene and petranthus in the greenhouse. So there's a big can of Musifolia, still standing but blackened completely by the frost and that'll be cut back. I'll put straw over the top of that one. And this ginger for STI is pretty hard, it doesn't really need any covering but I've probably forgot some spare straw, put some straw over that one as well. And the important thing I will do is mark where the plants are because some of the plants such as, if we just go around the corner, past all the wilting plants, over there, that is the tree dahlia, so I'll mark that so I don't dig it up with some straw over the top and probably a brick as well. And all the areas in between, I know that I can dig over in spring to plant. So that's what I'll do. Also, something else I need to do is collect seeds. It's quite hard to see, but here are the remains of Cleome. And inside these seed pods, We've got loads of seeds, and I'll collect the seeds before the frost turn them all to mush. And as you can see, there's going to be lots of empty spaces now, now that the summer bedding's been turned to mush. But it means the next job is in the garden will be able to take place, which is dig over this area, put some more manure on the top. As you can see, the sheffalas are totally fine, they're hardy. And palm trees, obviously. And the tree fern so far, although we've had minus 2.7 I think it was. This one's totally, totally green and looking healthy. But I will put straw in the top of that one. And in the other tree ferns around the garden as well. So we've got plenty of straw. So I'll use that now on the tree ferns to protect the centres. Well, just to show you that I have completed the shelter on the aloe polyphyla and the shelter on the arid bed so I showed you it last time but now I've actually screwed it down so it's very secure and if we look inside there the plants are nice and dry and snug but still with great ventilation so it doesn't get full of condensation or moisture and humidity in there so that's the arid bed and that won't come off now until probably next April the Seathia tree fern still green, it's been protected by the laurel above it and the other tree ferns, but that'll be protected with lots of straw and rubber tyres around the trunk, and that'll keep the worst of the cold weather that we might get off it. And fingers crossed it'll come back and grow strongly next year, as it has done this year. And here we are with some more tree ferns completely unfazed by the minus 2.7 we had. I will protect the centres, as I've just said. At the end of the garden, I'm doing a bit of a, a play area for the children. So I've started with this swing and climbing area. So I'll get that completed before it gets dark, hopefully. And finally, the Cycas Revoluta. I'll wrap that up with loads and loads of fleece, and it'll remain like that all winter until next March or April.